Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of plasma filaments dancing around the limbs here. There's cool science today from the climate out to colliding wind binaries as we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star bring the southern features into view, notably the dark coronal hole. Up north, the active regions depart, but not before giving one last goodbye kiss as they head out of view over the limb. A C-class solar flare seemingly out of silence, the sun is gearing back up to have these sunspots produce larger eruptions in the coming months. Solar cycle 25 is progressing. Let's go to the global climate report for July, and we're starting with the image sent around the media online. Problem is, not only is the scale misleading because it wipes out all the cold areas, those below average, but it's the same every month. The majority of this blue is hidden from the chart as white and sometimes even red in the publicly popular one. Up next, a fantastic development in solar forcing of the terrestrial climate. Folks, the Themis suite of spacecraft has been able to see the plasma streams from solar wind magnetospheric interactions behind the planet. They are showing us where the other half of the particle bombardment comes from. While the it's not the sun scientists can't debunk the statistics or the mechanisms currently being offered, they do sometimes mention how only about half the needed particle plasma is going to couple on the sun facing side. Simply put, where's the rest of the particle energization? Well, you're about to see it. Plasma fingers shooting back to earth along fields and directly integrating, coupling with the earth system. Folks, the climate playlist is listed below the video. Learn what that plasma does when it gets in here. You can also read in vastly greater detail about how the sun works the weather, earthquakes, technology, human health, and likely someday, the end of the world. Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is available at spaceweathernews.com slash publications. But we're moving on. Colliding wind binaries up next. Many of you have seen these sorts of animations. The powerful interactions between close binaries blasting incredible patterns into the outflow and surrounding material. Today, we're looking at APEP, named for a not-so-lovely Egyptian god who embodied chaos. And that's about right when it comes to their wind interactions. But as I was getting down through their modeling of the 3D surrounding nebula, I started to think, wait a minute. No. It can't be. Are we really supposed to not see the circular alien symbol from the movies in this one? You guys are going to give Sucolos a heart attack. In all seriousness, the identification of the features here of this wind nebula is fantastic science. Last but not least, folks, August Dunning, Caltech, formerly NASA JPL, a community leader in these parts, has been looking at the alleged ridge and caldera at the top of the world, and he thinks it's an impact crater. He wants to get it named Observer's Crater for the community, and after discussing with him yesterday, anything from a simple impactor that shot icy tsunamis and mud over the mammoths frozen instantly, to a micronova-driven impactor or even an electric arc discharge downward from that event, which does also produce a crater, could be a good explanation for that one. Link to his video is below. We greatly appreciate your support. You can see Dr. Dunning and others on this catastrophe topic in our Cosmic Disaster playlist that's listed below this video with the Climate playlist. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.